Our lead tonight is, of course, the budget. This budget is unique in a lot of aspects. I have some trivia for you. For the first time in India's history, we had a female finance minister presenting the budget in a parliament session opened by a female president. The day began with Nirmala Sitharaman visiting the Rashtrapati Bhavan. She met with President Draupadi Murmu. Sitharaman is the sixth finance minister to present five consecutive union budgets. She gave her shortest budget speech today, just 87 minutes long. But the budget was not short on substance. It is being cheered for all the right reasons. The budget this year has something for everyone. It is fiscally prudent, even though there were tax breaks for the middle class. There is an ambitious roadmap for growth and a strong emphasis on the fundamentals. I'm sure you already know about the key highlights, the rebate on income tax, that's what everyone's talking about, the highest ever outlay for railways and more. Tonight on Vantage, we'll look at the big picture. India is now pegged to be the fastest growing economy in the world. Does this budget support India's rise as an emerging power? Over the next few minutes, we'll unpack the budget for you. We've put together the five big takeaways. We're starting with the fundamentals. What does a rising power need the most? Infrastructure, roads, ports, housing, projects that create jobs, raise productivity and improve connectivity. These are essential for sustaining India's growth. And India is spending big money to achieve this. It's called capital spending. It's going up by 33%. A whopping $122 billion has been allocated to build these assets. Urban development is a big focus this time. It's also an urgent need. India's cities are choking. The finance minister has announced an urban infrastructure fund, around $1 billion. Where will this money go? To build infrastructure in tier two and tier three cities of India. Takeaway number two, the budget for diplomacy. This year, the spotlight will be on India's foreign policy. The finance minister said that India has a unique opportunity. The G20 presidency can strengthen its role in the world order. But does the budget help? The assistance, the assistance package for the neighborhood has been slashed. Last year, it was around $767 million. This year, it has gone down to around $660 million. India seems to be taking a more targeted approach trying to do more with less. Allocation for, for Bhutan and the Maldives has gone up. The highest allocation is for Bhutan, almost $300 million. For the Maldives, around $48 million. Both are important neighbors of India. There's budgetary allocation for Afghanistan as well. Despite the Taliban takeover, India is still supporting the Afghan people, around $24 million for Afghanistan in this budget. Iran is still under international sanctions, but India has once again earmarked 100 crore rupees or $12 million for the Chabahar port. It's the same as last year. Chabahar is a strategically very important project. The budget quota for Bangladesh, Nepal and Sri Lanka has been cut. No change in the money allocated to Africa. Next on our list is defense. The defense budget has seen a hike and with good reason. In recent years, India's security challenges have grown, the threat of cross-border terrorism from Pakistan remains, and the challenge from China continues to grow. The budget recognizes India's growing defense needs. This year, $70 billion, $70 billion have been allocated to defense. That's close to 6 lakh crore rupees, a 13% hike from last year. A big chunk of this will go into salaries and pensions. Almost 20 billion has been set aside for acquisitions, new weapons, aircraft, warships, and other military hardware. Takeaway number four, futuristic high-tech initiatives. I have a list again. Centers of excellence for artificial intelligence. The plan to set up 100 labs to develop apps for 5G. And the e-courts project to digitize courts. But Digital India seems to be taking a backseat. The budget for this flagship project, Digital India, has been slashed substantially. It's taken a 37% cut. The fifth and final takeaway, the aggressive push towards green energy. The finance minister announced the National Green Hydrogen Mission. As the name suggests, the goal is to promote green hydrogen. The mission targets four areas, creation, production, utilization, and export of green hydrogen. The goal is to enable India's transition away from fossil fuels. Over $2 billion have been allocated for this. You see, building a budget is a tricky balancing act. It's even more tough in an election year. Although in India, every year is an election year, with some state or the other going to the polls, but next year is the general election. 
Prime Minister Modi said, there's something for everyone in this budget. Amrit Kaal ka ye pehla budget विकसित भारत के विराट संकल्प को पूरा करने के लिए एक मजबूत नींव का निर्माण करेगा ये बजट वंचितों को वरीयता देता है ये बजट आज की एस्पिरेशनल सोसाइटी गांव गरीब किसान मध्यम वर्ग सभी के सपनों को पूरा करेगा